speaker for the day, Maria Beatrice Rocha Ferreira, uh, Mr. Phil, who's husband of Beatrice, okay. Professor Rosa Diamico, who's the president of Ipascaway, Professor Darling Kluka, who's the vice president of Ipascaway, Dr. Jeek Chung, who's the principal LNCP, Amal, all my dear PE teachers and community coaches, a warm welcome to one and all to the third batch of the PE and community coaching program. May I now take this spot to introduce Maria Beatrice Rocha Ferreira. Maria has a PhD in anthropology from the University of Texas at Austin at the Department of Anthropology, USA. She done a master's in physical education at the Faculty of Physical Education at the University of Sao Paulo, USP, Brazil. Developed her career as professor and research at the Faculty of Physical Education at the State University of Campinas, Unicamp. Was a professor at the University of Levin in Belgium. Quilvin University of Centre Western in Parana, Uni Centro. Federal University of Grande Duradas in Mato Grosso de Sul. UFGD and visiting research at the Laboratory of Advanced Studies in Journalism, Labja Unicamp. Her positions are since 2007, she's there in research at the NGIMA, nucleus of the research group on inclusion, movement, and distance learning of the Federal University S of uh, Jewess D. Fiora, board member of the NGO Kamauri, Indigenous Environmental Action, Culture, and Education in Campinas, Vice President of Ipascoe. Member of the Development Committee of XP. Her main topics of research and publications were related with Arabian society and culture, emphasizing social diversity, figurational process, power changes, especially in indigenous people games. On behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, Kelo India, and lectured by National College of Physical Education, a warm welcome to our dignified speaker, Maria Beatrice Rocha Freira. And today she'll be taking the topic on women, indigenous people's games, power and social changes. Ma'am, a warm welcome to you. I also would like to welcome Professor Phil, who's going to help Beatrice in her presentation. A warm welcome to you, Phil. I'd like to welcome Professor Rosa Diamico, who's the president of the Pascoe, and also a vice president of XP, Professor Darling Klika, to the session. I welcome Dr. G. Kishore and all my dear PE teachers and community coaches to this wonderful session, which will be taken by Professor Maria Beatrice. Over to you, ma'am, for your session, please. Thank you very much, Usha. And uh, it's an honor for me to participate in the um, Kelo Indian Physical Education Community Coaching Program. It's great to be here. And I'm going to talk about uh, human and indigenous people's games, power and social change. Because during the whole time, it had happened a lot of social change in Brazil. And uh, you can give some idea you now how they are now. I'll give some brief panoramic of Brazilian important dates, indigenous movements, indigenous people's games and women the games. And can you hear, it's good? Yes. Okay. And um, well, we have uh, before 1500, we had uh, only the natives in Brazil. And it's not called Brazil at that time, huh? but in that land. And then the Portuguese arrived in 1500. And after that, we had a lot of immigration waves. The Africans that had a long period of slavery. And then 19th, 20th century, the Portuguese came again. Italian, Spanish, German, Japanese, Lebanese, Armenians, and 20th century Chinese and Korean, Bolivian, Peruvian, and Mauritian, Athens, and Venezuelans. Then we have all these waves uh, here in Brazil. And uh, the colonizing process, uh, the idea was the conquer, it tells the conquer the territories looking for gold mines and to expand the frontiers. And um, the violence was very high here and also the disease. And then many of the indigenous people died. 
that they had a lot of impact on the population. You could see in 1500, we had from five to 10 million of people. They didn't know very well, but that was the idea they had. Now we have only 817 people. That's nothing huh, compared to the years before. But uh, we do have some indigenous language, 274, far, far, ethnic groups, 300, and the uh, indigenous land, 500, around 500. And see what represents 0.43% of the population. And um, you can see Brazil has a very degree of ethnic and racial interbreeding, mutual assimilation of cultures, syncretism, and racial miscegenation. And uh, the indigenous people are the small population, they are considered minority. Asian, black, and pardo, that's the mulatto, is in the white. The white and mulatto are the, the majority of here. Okay, we have two important dates. Then when you were independent from Portugal and then the Repub Republic Proclamation. And then at that time, we had the freedom from slavery, the information of the Repub Republican uh, national state and the pursuit of the Brazilian citizen identity. They were looking for who you were, you know, could you have only one, one people here? The idea of building only one country and the official language was established in the schools and the, on the street. And although many people were speaking other languages, but the, 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 the main important language was Portuguese. And see, when you think about physical education, sports, they thought that you should have only one method that we call the national method or the national Brazilian method. And um, they tried to, they had a lot of discussion, but they didn't recognize the capoeira. There was a fight. It's a very interesting fight that uh, in general, the slavery were playing. And then the indigenous games and the physical practice that they didn't recognize in the curriculum. And they brought all the ideas from Europe. And then they had all the programs based on European uh, ideas of physical education and sport, okay? What happened at that time, then was in the 20th century, uh, many people were taking the lanes of the indigenous people and the fight was already there. And uh, they created the Indian Protection Service. But the idea of the government was that uh, they should integrate in the society. In, they, they were not considered um, civilized people they were recognized as transitory subject that to be prepared to enter in the civilization. And um, although they had a different culture, religions and everything, but they want to form only one country. And this in the, uh, SPI, what we call in the Indian Protection Service was until 1967. After that, we still have the FUNAIS, the National Indian Foundation. It changed the idea, yes, you're going to see, but it's still sometimes when the government comes, like we have now, they, they think that they should integrate in society, but you know, it's a big mess. Okay, but after the Brazilian constitution in 1988, they were finally recognized as citizen because they were not citizen, as legal person, there was not considered a legal person. They didn't have ID, they couldn't have passport, they couldn't have almost anything. And then they recognized the social organization, customs, language, beliefs, and tradition. And then they start thinking about the cultural plurality of the Brazilian nation, that we should recognize our difference. Okay, and then we had major change in the middle of 1980s when happened that constitution. And uh, we had different programs, government programs, and also the civil society programs. The government programs, we had the leisure and sport. We had um, what they call sec secundo tempo, is second time of school. The, in general here, the children go only part-time, or in the morning or in the afternoon, the schools. But uh, with that program, they could stay the other part and uh, especially for low social class, they could access more sports and the other kinds of programs. And then they have a lot of incentive for elite sports. And um, finally, 
and the capoeira, you know, on the left side, they start being recognized as an important na national games in Brazil. And uh, the, some schools adopted, and then we have clubs now. And in the world, you can see in Europe, they, they have a lot of capoeira club there. And uh, the indigenous games start being looked in different ways, okay? And they have also the Agita program that Dr. Victor Matsudo gave the, the conference there. Uh, class and that he talked about Ajita. It's a program for um, everybody just to to change the behavior, to have more physical physical practice instead of being sed sedentary. Okay, and in other areas too, in the painting and uh, in the, you could recognize the difference of the culture. And the, something that uh, is new here is the circles because circles. I mean, people from other places, they would have and present. And now we have a small clubs and the young people like to go to the circles and practice and do small, it's not something big, but it's something very popular. You can see the circles. Okay, well, if you see the, the world changed and um, now the indigenous people, they space mobility, they, change, they move a lot. I mean, they, before they moved, but now they travel, they go to the conference, they, they participate in the social life. And the communication helped a lot, the network, social internet, Facebook, a lot of movements against the force of cultural uniformity of the country, and I guess the interference of government policy in the indigenous societies. The United Nations with all the programs it helps and another international organizations international indigenous movement in Canada, United States, New Zealand. See, the world was changing in, in these different parts of the world and uh, it helped a lot the Brazilian ones. And uh, we had um, a lot of indigenous movements in different areas, in, polit in politics, in social, about lands and about sports. Then we're gonna talk about sports here. And uh, back in the 1970s, there was a very, we still have Indigenous Missionary Council belongs to the Catholic Church and uh, it helps a lot. It's more politics, it's not too much related to religion, but it helps you know, um, it, it, to protect them. And uh, they have different programs and, uh, and the campaign and the manifestations, you know, when the government wants to, to, to take lands and etc. And um, the the most social movements for indigenous people expand especially after the constitution of 1988. Okay, now I'm going to focus on these two brothers that they created, they founded the Intertribal Committee of Memory and Indigenous Science. In fact, I invite them to, to, to come today, but they couldn't, unfortunately. And uh, they had uh, they, these two brothers uh, from Terena's ethnic group, they, <clears throat> when they were young, they went to study in Brasilia. And the Brasilia is, uh, uh, is a capital of Brazil. And the day when they went there, they start playing soccer. They love soccer or football. Huh? And uh, they create indigenous United Nations. And, but then they start to realize and understand better politics, knowing about the situation of other ethnic groups. And they, they recognize they have some human rights because they didn't know what is that. And the citizenship, and the, they start thinking about how rich was their culture. And the, at the same time, they had a very hard time with the structure of sport. I mean, at, at least when they talk, think about the twin at all costs, I mean, it, they didn't want to, to do this because their culture is much more celebration than you know, to win at all costs. And uh, I had an interview with Carlos and uh, he said, in Brasilia, I began to know other ethnic groups, especially Chavante, Juruna, Carajá. I started knowing other peoples and from this information, I also began to know the culture of these people. I always imagined that one day we could join those attitudes, say positive, around something that could be in common. That was his dream. And his brother, Marcos, uh, they, 
they were very good, good friends, but uh, brothers, but his dream was to be a pilot. He wanted to be a pilot. And then he enlisted it as a soldier at, in Air Force base in Campo Grande, and he was a pilot for a long time. But then the colonels, when they realized he was Indian, he said, no, you cannot, you cannot be pilot anymore. You don't have this right, you know, human right, et cetera, et cetera. And then he was very upset and he decided to quit because he wants to, to be part of a big airplane, Boeing, and, but he couldn't. But then he said, okay. And then he became, uh, he decided to work for, uh, be more political leader and he, he changed. But at the end he recognized he could do it, but said, no, it's too late. I'm going to more in politics. And he is still now he participating in the United Nations uh, meetings. He's he has very good connection with universities, associations, research pro projects, and uh, especially in the games and the, and the sports and the human rights, okay? But uh, they had the dream. The dream was to bring the games and rituals from the indigenous lands to the city. That's what they want, to, to show that uh, the rich, how rich the culture of the indigenous people are, and uh, to show to the city, because they were much more in the communities, in the rural area than in the cities. And then they did it. And then when you see the intertribal committee of memory and the indigenous sites, integrate with Minister of Sports, Minister of Education, Minister of Justice, and Secretary of Sports, State and Municipality, because the game has to be in the city. And uh, it's not very easy because sometimes the minister belongs to one uh, political part. The, um, the Secretary of Sports of States, another political part. And then the municipality, another political part. And then to integrate all of these different layers of society, it's not very easy, but they, they are doing. And then integrate with civil society, universe, I'm from the universe, that's my connection with them, NGOs, media, and public. But, uh, you know, everything you can see, this game represents a different time, space, and power. You know, they have, when you think all of these complex organizations, they have different way of thinking, different space, and power. Okay, that was a challenge. Uh, it has been a challenge since the beginning until now, because every time when the, the ministerial change requires new negotiations, the idea of celebration is stronger than competition for them. And many times the minister of sport thinks much more about competition and they want to celebration. And uh, the game, you see, the game, in, the, in that game, in that national games, in that uh, what called Olympic games, uh, indigenous games, uh, it represent the scientific knowledge because it has a lot of bureaucracy, bureaucracy that is, it's on the, the organization of the games. <clears throat> and at the same time, the traditional knowledge that comes from them, the way they think, the way they come, what they do, it, it coexists in the same area. I hope one day you have a chance to, to be there and uh, to, to be present one of these games. And the, the, the first game was in Goyas in 1996. At that time, that time, time, the minister of sport was Pelé, you know. Pelé was a very important soccer player and uh, he helped a lot. That was the first, the first minister said, okay, let's do it. And they, they started. And then they had all the, the events in all the cities, in Paraná, Pará, Campo Grande, etc. The last one was in, in 2013 in Cuiabá, Mato Grosso. And, but all these years, many countries wanted to do the same. And then they organized in Palmas, Tocantins, the first world indigenous games. That was something ex very important for the world, for the in different nations. Okay. Now the game itself, <clears throat> they have an um, opening, you know, the first day and all the, the indigenous ethnic groups, they come and they have this defile, huh? the parade and uh, the arena where the game started, the handicraft fair and where they sell, they bring the handicraft from their own communities and it's very good because they could 
take, bring some money to the communities. And then social forum, that's something that we should do it. In general, we do separate, huh? we have the Olympic games and then the, the scientific forum the, others, the other days. No, they have this, everything together. And um, every time they have uh, one uh, subject, like uh, one day they focus what is in health, the other it was about the lands, the other one about education or the future of young people. See, and then they, they invite the, some people from the university, some leaders, indigenous uh, leaders, and then from people from the administration. And then they have you know, one or two days in this for a social forum. And then uh, ever city, they, they build the, do the dormitory, a place that they stay. It's very interesting. Sometimes they are very nice with the Maloka, the Oka, in, with a special place. And uh, every, every group has to stay together with the uh, hammocks and uh, they sleep together there. And the food is very special too because some of them are vegetarian. Some of them are meat, eat only meat. They don't like vegetables and it's hard the, the food, you know, to, to organize this food place for them to eat. And the displacement logistics also is something very interesting because some of them come from Amazon, some from the south, from the east, west, and they stay there. And um, in general, they, they prefer to have the, <clears throat> the games uh, in the center part of Brazil because of the climate. The south is, is cold and then people from the north get sick moving to the south. Okay, some of the activities, you have the rituals, the dances. In general, they have a start with the dances and the fire, you start with the fire, something very special, how they, they put the fire. And the canoe, the log running, the uka uka fight, archery, the war, and the, all of this. Way women. <clears throat> okay, in the whole system, in the beginning, the first games, the woman would come only to accompany the husband in the games. The mothers always bring the children with them. The children are there always. Dance and rituals, yes, they could participate. Handicrafts to sell during the games and social forum to discuss different subjects. That's they, they could participate. But then it start changing. And some of the interview, they say that, well, in the I guess it, it, the game is very important because we get to know other ethnic ethnicities, create friendships. There was a woman from Karaja community. Knowing other relatives, you only see through times and time on television to exchange experience. The other say, we are here. That was a Kaigang leader. She is someone very, very important leader here. We are here to celebrate our culture. And after the games held in the arena, the people without the public celebrate the mitten, play with each other, teach their songs, sing and dance in front of each maloka to honor the relative who came and they didn't know. And um, that the public cannot see. Once I had the opportunity to be there with them and they have a lot of fun. It's some, some very special time that they, they are looking for. And uh, another, interview saying that uh, women didn't play football in the old days and now they can do after the games. And then some, some said, well, yes, it was very important to, to bring back all the games that were there on, on the minds of the old people, like archery, body, body painting. And, um, and some of them, like the Maori there, they say, yes, we can. We, we, you we used to play football, you, you can keep playing football. See, it changed. But the, the, la the last one on, on this box, uh, she says that uh, her father is responsible for everything to invite the, to everybody to play. And then she got married and the husband didn't want her to go anymore. But the father probably had, it was an important one in the, in the community there. And then he kept inviting her and then she could go and she was very happy and the husband didn't say anything and the father wants, okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> and then 
you can see the the indigenous uh, the meaning they permit myth cultural values and congregate the symbolic world of different ethnics uh, every practice has a symbolic meaning that's something important and uh, that is a differentiations you can see the differentiation the layers who commands who is the leader uh, ever they they start knowing each other how they organize their society ways of to exercise our territory to, to be recognized and uh, realize the difference of other tenacities, overcoming barrier, changing power relation between men and women. Since the beginning, they would come only to, to participate and not, not to, to be in the games. And now they come and then play, you know, how affect the day lives of them. And also between indigenous peoples and the state. That was, they, 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 it's, it's more, and they congregate better. Okay, and the ethos are present in the organization of teams and matches in, in our society in general. Um, you invite the best player to be there to represent the club and uh, to go to the Olympic Games. But for the indigenous, no, the family network is so important. Many times, yes, they invite someone good, but uh, you know it has to be in the same network, the family network. That's the that's way of they think. It's, it's a little bit different. Huh? And, and the, for the indigenous room, it's so important to participate in public life, in games and sport, because before, many of them would, would never go out, go to the city, only if they were sick or to have babies, but uh, not, not to, to have a participation in public life, to build a new social roles, to rethink and affirm their rights, indigenous and national society. But uh, when you see all the games, you can see that many of the games are still on the hands of men. Why? Because the games represent the day life of them. Like arrow is more for hunting, and then only men or men can do it. And then canoe is fishing, related to fishing, and then more men than women. And then the archery, the same thing. You can see. Some log running, yes, they, they both participate. The, um, the fighting, yes, both participate. And then ball, uh, also because of the football and uh, the running, both of them. See, there are, there are some difference because it's related to their culture. And uh, can see that women, now that's a log running and that they can be more visible through the handicrafts, dances, games, sport, soccer, to rename themselves, to build a new identities. And the indigenous men and women are in the process of empowerment, self-determination to national and international levels. The games reflect indigenous protagonism and the leadership. Tensions between indigenous leader and the government reflect the path of inequality and different interests. But uh, I can tell you that uh, the Marcos Terena is amazing politician. He is doing, he has patience, and then they go. Uh, Mar uh, Carlos, the brother, is much more related with the indigenous, the organization of the games. And uh, Carlos is more in the politics. See, they, those two work so well together. It's so good to see the, the relationship, the way that they do it. And this ebb is diminished as the actors, government, and indigenous leader manage to work together even under tensions, mistrust, and power struggle. And uh, see, many people ask, how much would the cost cost these games? And the game, see, in, in 2011, that was in one of the states here in Tocantins, we had uh, 1,300 indigenous participants. And the total in US dollar, you know, at the, the bottle, uh, it was $306,000. And it's not so high compared to the other uh, sport organization that we have here. But um, it's still for them, they have a dream to organize by themselves without, without the government, but uh, it's not, it's very, and then it's very high. The price is very high only for them without the support of the Ministry of Sport. But what's the consequence of the games? Many of the local communities and the, they decide to have their own games, you know, between 
the years because in general it goes for ever four years or ever three years. And then every year you can have a small one. You can see the Patasho in Bahia State in the Northeast and they have, it's very well organized the games. On the left side, you have the Guarani in the state of Sao Paulo. Also they have the games. And um, uh, there is in Amazon, the indigenous games, Ticuna. Is, Ticuna is one of the, the biggest, the largest population in Amazon. And uh, it's organized, these games organized by the Capuchins priests. They are there and they have a very interesting program in education and uh, in um, parties and then to help them to, 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 to buy, to, to have some profession. And then they have the games and also the games. You know, they had in 2010, 12, 16, in the beginning of this year, before the pandemic. That was, they were looking because they, at the end, now everything is closed. Okay. And, uh, you know, after uh, all these years, and then we had the second World Indigenous Peoples Games in Canada. That was in 2017. And uh, it was very interesting, but in Canada, they don't have too many traditional games. They are much more in sports. They had to have a lot of conversation, talk to see how they could do it, how they could bring some of the games from the past and how they could do. There are a lot of, they had a lot of conversation about that to organize this game. And that was in Alberta. And uh, I can tell, show you two videos. Uh, the first one was some, some photos of the first World Indigenous game here that was in Tocantins. And the second one, the, a game there in Canada. back home it's a uh, never experienced a feeling like this uh, and the atmosphere has uh, been uh, one of the greatest moments of my life in regards to what was the fans holy cow it was, it was, uh, it was special most special times in my sporting life and I've had very very many very great moments in my life but this is the most satisfying moment as a coach in my in my lifetime, and I can't express how happy I am with uh, for my team and the challenges and the, the perseverance. 
they're all only young ladies you know, and they've made our country proud, made our First Nations proud, um, and made our women and girls proud in, in our country. And, uh, and I also would like to acknowledge the Brazilian team and they made their their villages and their women proud and their country proud as well. Ok. All the events at this particular sports meeting stand out and hark back to ages past. Sprinters run on sand barefooted, leaving aside any Nike or Adidas shoes. The rugby like event is contested half clothed without any padding. Male competitors run barefooted as well, but carry a log. The tug of war is contested by strong women with mythical tattoos on their faces. Arrows are shot toward a fish-shaped target, segmented for different scores. The wrestling is fierce and flesh against flesh, but always ends in friendly gestures. The javelin throwing is mindful of a duel between two men, fighting for the ownership of a woman or a piece of land. The first ever World Indigenous Games were held from October 23rd to November 1st in the agricultural town of Palmas in Brazil's southern state of Paraná. Around 1,800 ethnic contestants from over 20 countries and regions have gathered to compete in 10 events, which evolved from the Indigenous People's Games first held in Brazil in 1996. In the near future, organizers plan to promote the competition into an Indigenous Olympics, which will hopefully be a boon for the 370 million Indigenous people worldwide. Okay, and uh, you could see uh, the games in Brazil and then the soccer there in Canada. And uh, that coach, the Canadian coach, is a very special person. I had the opportunity to talk with him when he came to Brazil. And uh, he has a wonderful program for young ladies there, young, young indigenous um, women there. And uh, he was telling me, how important was from uh, for the the young indigenous uh, women to get out of drugs and alcoholism and uh, and uh, to be recognized in Canada. It's something very special. He, he I'm very glad that they won. Okay, and then you know now what's the situation? The situation we do have a coronavirus. We didn't have it. We we're supposed to have a, a national indigenous game now, but uh, we don't. And um, uh, we, we still uh, have to think this post-COVID sports programs, think about the climate change that is affecting the world, but also there. The food security and the nutrition obesity this related with sport and the sedentarism that many of them uh, are, they don't practice anymore. And, but, uh, you know, we still, they have to think about that. And the alcoholism and drug combat and the pandemic, public policy, social conscience and ecosystem innovation. And uh, finally, we need to think about the human rights, the revitalization of culture and appearance in public life for women, feeling of being recognized as women, 
exer exercise of indigenous rights, not only for men, but also for women. We need to give more attention and expanding networks of interdependency. They did it, but they still have to, to be strong on that. Okay, I would like to thank you very much for your attention. And um, I have my email if someone would like to exchange some idea. Thank you very much. I think, hi, uh, some of videos you are shown, all the videos. Yes. No? Yes? Thank you so much, Beatrice. This is a wonderful session of yours. And indeed, uh, it was so nice uh, going through having a journey and trying to know more about the indigenous which we have it in our country too. And uh, you, you, since being an anthropologist, I think there's great to learn. So let's see, Amal, over to you, Amal. There are some questions, Amal, just see. Uh, from the participant side, there is no questions. But then you can ask, and then after you ask, I'll ask some questions. Okay. Madam, is there any particular organization or association to organize such uh, indigenous games systematically in your country? Well, yes, it was founded by those, those two brothers, Carlos Terena and Marcos Terena. They founded the, um, what they call inter-tribe uh, com uh, com community, but um, uh, and now, every group, they, they start to organize themselves. See, people in the state of Sao Paulo, they have, they get together, they organize, and then people from Bahia, from the, the north, and the, but the, the main organization belongs to these this two, the two brothers that they organize. But the government, they, they, they help, yes. I mean, they, it was helping before the pandemic, eh? and now with the new, new government and now with the pandemic, everything stopped. Yeah. But yeah. the contact, the main contact in Brazil, it, it has to be with Carlos Terena and Marcos Terena. Okay, thank you, madam. Now, how did you raise the funds and all for the, to organize such events? Is it fully by the government or any other private sector is there? Yes, the, oh, the, the main budget comes from the government, see? And um, also from uh, the, the logistics has to, to come from FUNAI. FUNAI is the foundation of indigenous people. That's from the government too. They have to help them, to translate them, uh, to do all these organizations. See, it's a pool of organizations that get together to organize the, the national games, but um, yeah. Okay, thank you. And also the media, I, I forgot about, talk about the media. The media is helping a lot too, not with money, but to, to okay. talk about, to interview and to have all this. It's a very, the media is, is very important part of the, the indigenous games, yeah. Okay, thank you, madam, Shamara, please. Thank you, uh, Beatrice. Now you talk of the indigenous, uh, like, uh, I, could you just narrate your experience? Because whenever you said you approach through these two brothers, but then um, when from our society or anybody who happens to approach, how do they respond in such cases? Are they still into the remote or have they changed with the times? These indigenous. Excuse me, it, it cut the, 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 the last part. Are these, do you find this a change because of, uh, we talk of during the urbanization, the modern society has changed. There are oh, yeah. some, some, in some cases, they are not ready for a change when we talk of the indigenous tribes. But do you find, how do you find this, uh, is it the same or with the, with the modernization, there is also a change in them. They are also coming in towards the, uh, the uh, to the society that I'd like to know. Oh, yes, they changed a lot. Yes, yes. Some of them, what happened that with the SPI, uh, that organization back in the, the beginning of the 20th century, they want, to, to, they want them to change, see? And many of the lanes are next to the city. They move, the, the indigenous people, in, especially in the Mato Grosso do Sul, uh, 
and then the state of Sao Paulo, many, many of these lands are next to the city. And see the city, it's also a neighborhood of the city. And that's impossible not to change, see? If you go to Amazon, you know, it's different. Uh, they are much more far from, from some, not so close to the city. And they didn't move, they didn't change too much. At that time, they're not very interested in the lands in Amazon because of the forest, but they were very interested on the lands of, the problem is the land, see? And then the, in the Mato Grosso, Sao Paulo, in the South, yeah, they want the land. And see, they start moving the, these indigenous community ne, too much to the next, next to the city, and then they change. If you go sometimes in one and say, well, you know, it, people think, well, but he's Indian because he has a cellular, he has cars, motor, they have everything. But uh, they still, every ethnic group is different than the other one. Someone, someone that I work a lot is the Guarani. They, they're much more related to religion and the, the way that they build themselves. See, it's very different than the other one that almost do, do not have religion. See, they changed a lot. But yes, interfere and uh, they are much more, the schools also, when they put the schools in the village, and then the, the idea is to have, to teach only Portuguese. See, they didn't want to recognize their language. They, they have to speak Portuguese. And that, yeah, it changed, it changed. But with the games, that's an interesting because they start thinking about the old times and how important was the game for their identity. That's, that's changed a lot. And then, and then they feel very proud to come to the city to show, listen, we have something different, different than you have never seen. See, it's a way of exchanging, but yeah, good question. Yeah, and uh, another thing is um, you find a lot of talents. When you saw the, uh, the videos, they are very talented because they have a lot of in, uh, inbuilt qualities. Uh, they're very rough, mm -hmm. tough. So do you think that among these indigenous, they could be uh, coming into, they have been selected, identified, for any sport? Could they be brought in and trained? Was there any situation in which these indigenous tribes were taken into the regular sporting situation? Did it ever occur like that? Yes, especially, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, some of them, yes, they, they think that they would like to come more to the sport. They, uh, in, in the past, C. Carlos was, he was a soccer player. And then that's why I said, well, I want to do, show something different. See, but now he realized that especially football, you know, they, they love football and volleyball too, because volleyball, it's easy to play in the community. You, you, you have just a net and just play, but basketball is more difficult and other games, but volleyball, yeah, Darlene, I know that you are going to like the idea. And also the football, you don't need anything, can just a field just to play. And then they, they would like, so Carlos had a dream we had a connection with a Spain once, and then went there and the professor wanted to bring some of the athletes, the, the, the good uh, football player there. But then it didn't work out. They, they still, they are a little bit afraid because of their culture to move, to bring these people to the city, it's hard. To go overseas is harder and uh, it's not very easy, but uh, yeah. I think we, we had, we had only one in indigenous that is playing in these main soccer clubs in Brazil. One or two, not, not too much. But they, they, love, they love football. Football is something that they love it. Yeah. And now when we talk of the India, like especially state in Kerala, we have a lot of tribes. But there are yeah. some who are into too remote and uh, we also don't understand the language, but they're yeah. not really come out of their place and we thought they're very good so we went for a talent identification you just ask them to jump they would jump they have got innate qualities but the only problem is they are not when you say something they are not ready to respond and uh, they are not ready to come out of their place and come and get used to it because when you come into our training it's an entirely different situation so yes. that was one important and they have a lot of talents so we thought one of the best way of identifying talents is also uh, getting into such uh, uh, rural areas, going into the tribes, because definitely we can get better talents as one. 
do you have any experience where you have personally visited these tribes at their location have you ever seen like when when you had a rapport with them when you spoke to them did you have you narrate any experience where you um, did you ever i mean you certainly you've been to amazon or to such places uh, could you narrate a brief uh, uh, how was your uh, how did you find them when you spoke to them or did they like how was the communication how could you build up a rapport with them did you, yeah. did you yeah well i, I always went to a, a special situation more in education or you know is field work too or health program and um, it was very very interesting once i had a very good experience with a mathematician uh, in the north of amazon and uh, he was teaching math and then he invited me to go there that he could join the math and then the games and uh, then was one of the best experience because we thought he thought about to teach physics and then we prepare everything and then when i went there and they said, no, I'm going to speak about geometry. I think it's easier for them. And then I had to change. And then it was beautiful to see how good it was to have the, our movement is based on geometry. <laughs> I had never thought about this. And I said, how it could fit together, you know, different areas in, in, in the curriculum for them. And then they had to apply all the knowledge to their culture. That was beautiful. That was something amazing, you know, to canoe, then he had to count and then to talk about the movements and then, in, you know, the handcraft. And it, I, I couldn't believe it. It's pity that I didn't have any camera to film. And we took photos. I can send you some photos, but uh, we did. We, you know, it, it make a wonderful movie about that experience. And then the, all, I had some students, in, in the Indian students, that was something very special too, to, because the way that they think is different and tend to, to write a thesis, is something different. And now they're much more, you know, in politics or they want to, to show this empowerment and say, no, but science, you cannot say this, there was this. It, it's very good experience with them. Wonderful. It's, it's indeed a great one because uh, you said of uh, the number of these indigenous tribes are decreasing. I mean, you're unable to, we don't know what the culture was here. You say it's uh, missing out. This is what's happening recently. So uh, I say, you know, maybe we find that extinction of some, I don't know whether it's the same in case it will happen. So now here we are trying to retain some of those folk, whatever the natural things were there. We are trying to do that, but I don't know to what extent. Anyway, it was a wonderful session. Over to you. Let me hear darling from you, please. Uh, Beatrice, every time that um, I listen to the uh, presentations involving indigenous populations, I learn a tremendous amount. So um, on behalf of myself, uh, I thank you so much for, obrigada, for, for doing um, uh, all the wonderful work over the years that you've done. And now to continue to highlight uh, indigenous populations, especially those in Brazil, because Brazil is such a large country and uh, there are parts of, uh, of uh, the Amazon that maybe we haven't even really gotten to yet in order to see what's happening. And uh, I hope that um, through this, uh, many of our folks who are uh, participating in this find uh, a real value to continue to keep um, talking about Indian indigenous games and those types of things so that we don't lose our anchor, the place that, that we are rooted in. So thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alan, with this wonderful information, because I keep telling it's a learning lesson every day. It's, it's so nice, you know, listening to each of the speakers because 
they are lessons and these lessons are which are memorable ones so they're like a movie you know you keep seeing you and hearing and any amount you hear i think that's not enough for us so thank you so much darling over to you rosa i love the part about volleyball <laughs> i understand <laughs> And Darren, you you need to bring us a day because Amal is here. Do get us a a day session for volleyball. Please do try to get in that. It will be real fun because I think uh, our community will be reading needing that too. So you can also ship that. Over here, Rosa, please. Okay. Before saying anything to Beatrix, yes, Be uh, Darlene did a wonderful presentation on volleyball. to the Bolivia Volleyball Federation. So yes, she has won. Go for that. Okay. Uh Beatrice, thank you very much for bringing the topic. I think it's very very important uh to speak about this thing and moreover that there is platform for that. And thank you also to Usha that with your flexibility to allow us to present uh our the topics who we want to speak the most and i think about indigenous games when i speak about that and an indigenous group we always have to explain uh the difference because normally in the english literature it is indicated indigenous uh games confused with traditional games okay and there is indeed a difference between the countries that had experience of post colonial education okay so in our case and we treasure a lot the indigenous games but the traditional thing is the combination of what colonizers brought to us and there are just games not that not just the normal western sport which is different so it's always very difficult when we speak to the general audience uh that they are not familiar with post colonial education to make them understand the difference okay so sometimes when they speak about traditional games they believe they are respecting uh indigenous culture and indigenous games no that's not true one thing is indigenous game and there is another thing which is traditional games and the others are the modern games okay so that is very important that we get to know and that our audience understand i also believe it is uh, so relevant that all this movement with indigenous people that really has been in the 20th 21st century it was the last part of the 20 but in the 21st century where there has been more this input which i think it's important for indigenous and aboriginal people and i make this distinction because we know that if, for example in australia they make a, a distinction between aboriginal people and indigenous people so it's so important to give them a platform so we can respect because this is part of the respect that we can show okay how we can continue having this rich culture that keeps on going and that it doesn't die because as, as in the same way that there are minority languages group that sometimes they get lost it does happen with the same with the games with the indigenous game so it's always uh relevant any information that keeps that topic outside because we all know i mean about the indigenous people but it's like we always see them like so far away in history and that there's not part of history they're now and they're here so in many places like the indigenous game have become very relevant if you check for example quality physical education what does it says it also indicates to pay respect to the indigenous games to the traditional games to the local realities so that's why to see it's relevant to get to know what it's in there in terms of indigenous games and that's why i insist it's so important to bring this topic in any of the opportunities we have chance because most of the time we forget about that i also have a theory and i have this discussion normally here in the country that unfortunately we did not cultivate the indigenous games that people used to practice 
For example, in our case in Venezuela, indigenous people were very good at hunting, swimming, canoeing, because they had to survive, okay? And horse riding afterwards, okay? With the colonial period. So we didn't cultivate that. If we made a comparison, for example, with Japan and Korea, so what they did, judo, taekwondo, and where does it come from? From their real traditions. So in our post-colonial education, we didn't cultivate that. So it's like we ignore and we started to do things which are totally different. So I said, what do you think it would, would have happened if we have continued cultivating, you know, the potentials our people had? So it's an issue to think about how we can manage to know a bit more about them. And that's a way to show them respect. I have had the chance to get to some indigenous group in here, but just related with language. And I, what I have observed is that sometimes they are reluctant when someone who is not from their community to get there in, because of course it has been years of fear, okay, and mistreatment. But then when you show them respect in terms of their culture, then they're willing to share. And I have had wonderful experience, particularly in the border with Brazil, where there are indigenous groups that speak English, Portuguese, and Spanish, which is fantastic. And they have their own language. And it is fantastic. So we have people in the central part of the country, like the educated people that speak only one language. Okay, so there you go. We got a richness in there that we have to continue cultivating. So thank you very much, Beatrix, for bringing the topic. And I hope they can continue because there's a cosmovision of the world among the indigenous people and that they continue uh, supporting that their traditions don't get lost. Thank you. Well, welcome, and it's true, and uh, um, the this national event is so important because they they give some um, they could know each other they could understand the culture of the other one the language listen the language of the other one that they never uh, could listen and um, and then to be part of our society see and the people the media and, and the public to recognize them. The, the richness of their, their culture is something that integrate them. And uh, one way, if you recognize when someone see you in different way, see? And then that, that's why important so to have these national events. And then they, it gave them strength to keep doing in their own lanes and in, in, the, in different parts there in Brazil. And now in the world, huh, the Canadians, and uh, the next one supposed to be this year here, but uh, with the pandemic, you know, they, they decide not to do it, but they are going to discuss what's the best country to do. Probably another country, not here. See, people in New Zealand, they came, the Australian came only for presentation, but uh, they, they are so different people from New Zealand. And the, in the YouTube, you can go to YouTube and just, you know, to try to see some of the, the you can have all of them. And um, I, I chose those two because it's in English, but uh, it, there are more in English too. And uh, in the broadcast from different parts of the world. And the New Zealand, <laughs> totally different, <laughs> different than the, the here and then there. And it's, yeah, yeah, it's important to stop and think that, well, there is something different. No, Thanks a lot. Of the way I would think is part. Yeah. Thank you for bringing in this uh, great input because I feel is um, um, I, we talk of extinction, but that's in terms of otherwise. But are we losing? Maybe it may be uh, certain art forms, certain dance forms, certain play forms may cease to exist. So at least in a we need to uh, what is it? Catch it in a museum form or in a in some sort of form. Or we should have only a webinar where we can bring in these people and have those, can give them an opportunity that, I mean, things would be really great. Because we were trying in Kerala because folk dancers, we are trying to promote. 
So we thought, why don't we include that for the fitness aspect, going to each aspect of it. But one of the biggest challenge we have is again, uh, act, uh, like uh, they would not allow us to enter uh, into theirs, you know, so they have a different, that's what we see in many cases. Because at times they have a feeling is, uh, they should not lose what they have. So they have that kind of a circle. That's a very important thing that they have to have. Over to you, Amal. I think there's a question, Amal. Uh, Madam, here we have a question from the participant side. How we can adopt good sports practice of indigenous sports people in modern games and physical education? Means how we can uh, take the good sports practices from the indigenous people to the modern society? Yeah, well, it's, it's not very reason. It depends who wants to take it, who wants to change. Because the, the, the first idea is the celebration. I mean, is the motto of the, the idea. Celebration, you know, no matter what, is more important than to win. For sure that they, everybody likes to win. Nobody wants to lose, but you no, know, we had to celebrate. And then the connection, uh, between groups, and I think it's very important that you should learn from them. And then some of the practice, yes, as you could, but the, like log, log running is, is very heavy. The, the log is 100 kilos. You have to be very strong to run. And for women, 60 kilos is also is very heavy. But the, some of the fights, yes. I don't know, you know, but the, it, the dance are beautiful, the, the way that they dance and the rituals. We need to think about the ritual, the more in this ritualistic way of uh, seeing the, the, the games. And, and if you see the, la, and then the place that, uh, if you see that there is an interview, uh, the Canadian, they, they, the women were not allowed to play lacrosse in big events and now after the games they can do it and then there is one interview can could find see it, the place changed and then that's why we need to think the game itself because they, they it belongs to the cosmology it belongs to, to to the rituals and then sometimes as yes, you, you can take but it's very difficult just to take the game to separate from the culture but um, you can learn something, especially the way that the celebration. I think the celebration we, we needed to learn. That's a little bit closer to the f uh, fair play, but um, yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Abel. Thanks, Beatrix, because I feel is a, a number of game because uh, some of the games that we saw is tug of war. Even the log running has come in another form of a competition. But uh, now we yeah. find a lot of things which are coming in. But uh, if it gains popularity, like you said, tug of war, which is already there. So I think wrestling or archery or boat race, uh, I think many of them would be getting in. But uh, definitely um, when it comes to the um, uh, to their, their indigenous, indigenous way of performing would be very different than when you do it in a structured way where there are rules to be followed. So both might be different. And it was indeed so nice because... Uh, Every time I say it's a learning and then you took across, you took us through a journey of meeting various indigenous people, even though we could not have face-to-face -face interaction, but you gave us this opportunity. So thank you so much, Beatrix. Indeed, it was a wonderful session. And uh, you are an anthropologist. So, I mean, you have better access, but Rosa, I'm so happy of hearing, you know, she was saying is these people, they speak three languages. That's something great when you talk of, we are educated only one. You know, she was saying that's something which, because when I went and met some of them, I couldn't understand the language they spoke. And then when you tell them some, they would not even mind. So I felt as they don't like rules, they'll, they'll have their own rules. So certain things were there, but it's so nice to hear that. But uh, as you said, they have a very rich, uh, their culture will be rich. And uh, thank you so much. So on behalf of the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Sports, Government of India, Hello India, uh, big thank you. Hats off to you, Beatrice. It was a wonderful session because we believe in having such uh, topics and concepts which uh, most of our PE teachers are not aware of. So we want actually introduction of such topics. And I'm sure uh, we do have tribes across the country. So our PE teachers who are listening definitely would this would have instilled them. Now they would have an ink, uh, a curiosity of at least going and finding out what it is. How can we go about? So thank you so much for instilling in that. I also would like to thank Phil 
your husband who has helped you the technology thank you so much professor phil for helping us uh, in in this particular session i'd like okay. to thank darlin thank you so much in spite of such a hectic uh, day and i think you had a sleepless night but you kept yourself awake early morning coming in and the light is in now that is a light so it's nice to see you and yeah with a cup of coffee or tea thank you so much uh, dan i always say you know because you give us you inspire us you give us the strength and uh, even though like you are troubled but uh, we are energized so thank you so much dalin for being a part of this mission i'd like to thank uh, professor rosa thank you so much because in all uh, troubled times you're there as to give us a helping hand and um, especially with this international platform and because of you we could hear such topics such as indigenous which i never thought i don't think ever people are discussing in the p platform such a topics so thank you so much rosa for making it a real international one and for your valuable inputs which you have put in and especially with like in relation regard to the indigenous thank you rosa thank you so much on behalf of the ministry with the peasant sports government of india kelo india big thank you again to our uh, dignified panelist i'd like to thank uh, dr gk shosa thank you so much for being a part of this is in a meeting right now i'd like to thank thank amal being the co-host thank you amal and i need to thank uh, uh, jaypal harihar and pranesh for uh, helping us in giving us technical assistance i need to thank all my dear pe teachers because i i always tell you know it's been it's been tiring because we had a marathon session throughout and uh, sitting throughout sitting i understand you know for this for us maybe for a short while it's okay in spite of the entire online class learning they make it a point of coming and sitting to this international session, uh, speaker session thank you so much my dear pe teachers i always say you are the heart and soul of this program and it's because of you that we are, have such international panelists and experts coming in just to i mean talk to you and to share their valuable uh, expertise so once again on behalf of the ministry of peace and sports government of india kelo india uh, thank you and namaste namaste thank you namaste bye bye take care darling darling please to come here so that come here so that i i just wish you were with us so you could relax and you just relax and you be charged